हेलो गाइस होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर सेफ एंड हेल्थी एट होम टुडे आई एम कम अप विद अ स्मॉल टॉपिक ऑफ बायोकेमिस्ट्री दैट इज़ द मेम्ब्रेन आइसोलेशन जैसे कि हमें पता ही है जब हमने मेम्ब्रेन के साथ काम करना है तो हमें मेम्ब्रेन प्योर फॉर्म में चाहिए और उसके लिए हमें मेम्ब्रेन को आइसोलेट करने पड़ेगा तो इसके लिए स्टार्ट करते हैं हम आज का टॉपिक दैट इज़ मेम्ब्रेन आइसोलेशन सो अ टिश्यू में कंटेन सेवरल टाइप्स ऑफ सेल्स एंड ईच सेल मे कंसिस्ट ऑफ वेरियस मेम्ब्रेन बाउंड स्ट्रक्चर्स एज वी नो दैट अ सेल इज सराउंड बाई प्लाज्मा मेम्ब्रेन एंड इट इज सेमी परमीएबल एंड ऑल द सेल ऑलमोस्ट कंटेन वेरियस ऑर्गेनलीज एंड ऑल ऑर्गेनलीज दे आर सराउंड बाय मेम्ब्रेन एंड देयर फोर आइसोलेशन ऑफ मेम्ब्रेन्स एंड करेक्टराइजेशन ऑफ देयर कंपोनेंट्स यूजली इन्वॉल्व सेवरल फ्रैक्शनेशन स्टेप्स सो देर आर वेरियस स्टेप्स बट नाउ फॉर यूर कोर्स वी विल डिस्कस ओनली थ्री मेजर स्टेप्स फॉर देयर आइसोलेशन so firstly let us start with the first step the first step in the isolation of membrane is the preparation of cell population that is homogeneous what do you understand by term homogeneous a homogeneous cell population means all the cells should be same with regard to their function with their age as well as their growth phase so disruption of tissues into single cell can rarely be achieved without significant modification of the plasma membrane but this problem can be solved by the use of cultured cell so what are cultured cells you people know very well that under the aseptic conditions we can grow a large number of homogeneous types of cell population so the use of cultured cell can be avoid this problem but it may also introduces problems that will result in mixed and mutant populations so we have covered this first point that is preparation of cell population that should be homogeneous then the next step is the homogenization of cells and tissue students i hope you people know that what is homogenization homogenization is a very simple technique jab hum gharon mein jaise ki pastel mortar istemal karte hain cells ko grind karne ke liye usi tarah ke lab mein pastel mortar use kiya jata hai so homogenization of cells and tissue can be achieved by subjecting the cells to a combination of shearing forces as encountered between लो क्लियरेंस सर्फेसिस और बिटवीन हाई स्पीड रोटेटिंग ब्लेड्स और बाय द हाइपर ऑस्मोटिक शॉक तो दीज आर द वेरियस मैथड्स बाई विच यू कैन फाइनली होमोजिनेट यूअर टिश्यू एंड समटाइम्स देयर आर मोर रेजिस्टेंट सेल्स दे आर वेरी हार्ड इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू होमोजिनाइज दैम फॉर दैट केस मोर रेजिस्टेंट सेल्स दे आर डिसरप्टिंग बाय द यूज ऑफ अल्ट्रासोनिक इरेडिएशन और देर आर वेरियस मैथड्स बाय शेकिंग सेल सस्पेंशन विद ग्लास बीड्स एट हाई स्पीड एंड वन ऑब्जर्वेशन इज देयर according to thermodynamics thermodynamics states that the membrane organization is such that the disrupted and fragmented membranes they are spontaneously vesiculated to minimize the interaction between water and the hydrophobic portions of the membrane what does this mean this means that when you apply homogenization conditions the cell membrane spontaneously get vesiculated vesiculated means they get circular circularized or they get spherical why they get spherical shape because they want to reduce the interaction between the water and the various hydrophobic portions of the membrane along with this osmolarity and composition of the disrupting medium are also important mostly we see that we use hypotonic media 
what is a hypotonic media hypotonic media is that which is diluted compared to that of the solution so that means it contain less salt concentration in the hypotonic media which causes the swelling and disruption of the organelles therefore to compensate this we use sucrose and sucrose which is a thick and commonly used as a soluble since it is inert relatively impermeable and freely soluble in water and it can yield a solution of density from 1 to 1.4 and sucrose generally does not modify activities of the enzyme and the other proteins along with the sucrose we also use buffers metal chelators and multivalent ions in the homogenization medium why all of these are used because buffer will help to maintain the constant ph metal chelators will help to destabilize the membrane and the multivalent ions will promote aggregation of the fragmented membrane as we will provide this homogenization our cell membrane will get fragmented along with this the ionic strength ionic composition and temperature significantly affect the fracture boundaries of the membrane this is because plasma membrane which is semi permeable exhibit environmentally sensitive topographic heterogeneity along with this transverse asymmetry and functional complexity because when we provide these harsh conditions it will result in the change in the basic structure of the membrane as well as its asymmetry as we know that the membrane is bilayer and the composition of the one phase lipid is different from the another phase lipid lipid so therefore to maintain its transverse asymmetry and functional complexity it requires several membrane components and the final protocol which we will use to undergo the homogenization is the trial and error method because this is a very laborious process and different experiment has to be performed to get the final protocol so lastly which method will be used it depend upon the successfulness of the experiment now coming to the third step of membrane isolation that is a separation of vesiculated membranes and organelles as we have studied earlier in the previous sheet that when we provide homogenization all the cells become vesiculated the membranes become vesiculated they shrink and now they can be achieved on the basis of one of one or more of the following properties so we can separate the vesiculated membrane on the basis of volume density their electrical properties their specific binding sites because of its general applications mostly used method is the density gradient centrifugation has been used more often than any other technique so a choice of method and conditions for isolating any membrane will depend upon the nature of the membrane and upon the starting material for example if we want to separate the mammalian erythrocytes on which most of the biochemical membrane work has been done we use simple hypotonic conditions as red blood cell is very simple and when we use hypotonic solution it causes the lysis of the cell content and we get the shrinken membrane of the red blood cell which is known as gusts and after the hypotonic lysis we follow the centrifugation technique so this is the case with the red blood cell in some more complex tissue such as intestinal mucosa we will follow more than 5 or 7 steps procedure to isolate the membranes for this we will follow this protocol so this is a simple flow chart how to isolate the tissue for example that is the 
intestinal tissue so firstly we will take the tissue in that we will add 30 to 40 ml of 0.25 molar sucrose as we have studied earlier sucrose is a inert so we can use it then we homogenate it homogenate it then followed by the centrifugation in the first step we will centrifuge this mixture at 900 g g is the relative centrifugation force that is applied for the 10 minutes which will result in the sedimentation of some of the component and the supernatant in the first step after 10 minutes centrifugation we will separate the sediment and the supernatant then we will collect the sediment sediments and add 15 milliliter of 0.25 molar sucrose again centrifuge it for 10 minutes at 900 g this will result in again some precipitation and supernatant to the resultant super uh, sediment we will add 15 milliliter of 0.25 molar sucrose again centrifuge it at 900 g for 10 minutes again it is followed by the uh, step that is result in the sediment and the supernatant from the previous two steps we collect all the supernatants and mix all the supernatants into this after these two three steps of centrifugation we will get the precipitate or sediment which contains cell debris which we do not need to bother we didn't need it and we will get nuclei if we wish to work with the nuclei and nuclear membrane we can go for that uh, nuclear membrane separation and we will get unbroken cells after all the supernatant and centrifuge them at 7500 g for 10 minute this will result into sedimentation and the supernatant we will collect the sediment and we will add 10 milliliter of 0.25 molar sucrose and centrifuge it for 10 minute at 1500 g which will further result into the separation of mitochondria and the supernatant now if we want to perform experiment with the mitochondria we will use this palette and if we want to go further we will collect the supernatant and in this we will add layer of ether and light petroleum in the one is to one ratio and we will centrifuge it for 90 minutes at 50,000 G at this final step we will get a pallet and a supernatant again this pallet contain the microsomes what are microsomes microsomes they are a fragment of endoplasmic reticulum and attached ribosomes if we want to work with the endoplasmic reticulum we can use this microsomes depending upon our requirement we can work with microsomes we can work with mitochondria and we can work with nuclear membrane so that's it with the today's topic thanks for watching this video guys hope all of you understand this topic very well if you students like this video share this video with your friends and if you have any query related to this topic ask me in the comment box and very soon i will come up with my new video with a new topic of biochemistry thank you very much